In this new video we're going to carry out a C3794 one-way delay test with the new Albedo Telecom Ephigenius with internal C3794 SFP capability. Now to carry out a C3794 one-way delay test you'll need two units, one on each end of the circuit. You'll also need to make sure the Ephigenius is equipped with the GPS capability and that you also have the Albedo Telecom C37.94 SFP. Now the C37.94 SFP should be inserted into port A, as in the picture. And then you should attach the GPS aerial to the GNSS connector on the top panel of the unit as well. Once the SFP is plugged in and you have the GPS aerial connected, then we need to power on the unit and wait for the product to boot up. Now once the unit has booted up, we will see the main start screen here. And the first thing we always recommend when using the unit is to do a system restart to clear out all the existing settings that may be uh, still left in the unit from other tests. Now, if you're familiar with the unit, you know how to navigate around uh, the menu structure. If you haven't used the unit before or not familiar with the menu structure, then we do have another video that takes you through the operation of the Ephigenius and explains how the different menus work. But assuming you've watched that video or know how to use the unit, we're now going to go over to the system menu by pressing the touch screen or using the cursor keys on the front. Go into the system menu, uh, make sure we're at the top level and menu within that system menu. Then we're going to go down to reset to factory settings, select yes, and that will now clear out uh, any remaining settings that may be in the unit. We can press the home key to get back up to the, the top level. Now when we do that the unit will be reset and it will be reset to use the uh, internal clock of the unit as default. We can check that by pressing the LEDs button and we can see that the top there where it says reference and lock there is no LEDs being uh, no LED, soft LEDs being indicated at the moment. So press the LEDs button again to get rid of that. We need to set up the unit to use the GPS, external GPS signal. So we go across to setup, press enter, and if we're at the top level here, which we should be normally, we're going to scroll down to reference clock and to the input clock and scroll all the way down here and select GNSS. And once we do that, unit will then try and lock on to the external GPS signal. Now once again we press the LED button, now we can see that the reference um, soft LED is green, that means we've got an input signal, um, but we've not locked onto it yet, that's why the, the lock soft LED is still showing uh, showing amber. Now, of course we need to make sure our GPS aerial is connected and we've got good line of sight to the satellites in order to receive the signal. We can always check that by pressing the home key to go back up to the main menu, go across to system, and to general settings here, and make sure we then select GNSS. And here we get some more information about the GNSS signal. We can see, um, we're still waiting for PPS signal. Uh, we can see the number of satellites that we're, we're seeing, the number of satellites we use. So it's a good, good tool if you want to check that you've got a good GPS signal, or you're seeing a GPS signal, especially in the cases where maybe you can't lock on to the, um, uh, to the external GPS signal. Press the home key, we can press the LEDs again. We can still see here, that we we haven't locked onto the signal yet, but that doesn't stop us setting up the rest of the unit whilst whilst we're waiting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back over to the setup menu, hit escape to go back up one level. We need to change the mode. At the moment we've got it set for Ethernet endpoint. Now we're not doing an Ethernet test. We're going to do a C3794 endpoint test. So we press enter, and we're going to use the chaos keys to scroll all the way down to the bottom here till we hit and select C3794 endpoint. Now we've set that now, we're now in the C3794 endpoint mode. What we want to do now is set up the port. Now the port A is where we should have our SFP plugged in, so we're going to go to port A, press enter, and now we can see that the um, frame mode is set to C3794, and we can see that the data rate is 64 kilobits per, kilobits per second, or one, one time slot. And we can change that either way, we can change the data rate, and just select a different data rate, for example 128 kilobits per second, in which case the number of time slots will change, or we can change the number of time slots and the data rate will change. 
it's sometimes quicker just to change the data rate. Just going to change that back to 64 kilobits per second for the moment. Now, the other thing I just want to point out here, or we'll come back to it, is the laser. Now, the laser is turned off by default on the SFP, obviously for safety reasons, but you can go and turn this on, and you'll need to turn this on when you actually um, go and do some testing. Now, as it happens, I've actually got I've already got an optical cable, a loopback cable connected to the SFP, so I'm just going to turn that on at this moment, although we can come back and do that later if we wanted to. So really now we've set up the basics, we set up the... Um, the C3794 endpoint mode, the number of time slots we want to test on C3794, and we set the unit up to use an external clock. I'm just going to press the LED button again, actually, just to see where we are. Oh, now we can see that the the reference LED is green and the lock LED is green at the top there, so that shows that we've not only got the GPS signal, but we've locked onto it, so we're good to go. So let's turn the LEDs back off, press the home key to go back up to the top level menu. Now we're going to go and set the actual test up. So hit escape to get back up to the top level. Now what I actually want to run here is a delay test. So we go down to delay test, we select yes. We need to enable the delay test. We're going to say yes once again. And once we've enabled it, we need to change the measurement mode. At the moment it's set to do a round trip delay. This is where we send a signal, it's looped to the other end, and then we receive the signal and we measure the round trip delay. But in most cases, we want to do a one-way asymmetrical uh, delay measurement where we're measuring the forward and return delay. So we're going to just go in here and change it to one-way delay. Now, we're near enough ready to run the test. There's one more thing we need to do, and that's to actually calibrate the unit or adjust the zero offset. Now, with the unit, Ephigenius unit being an electronic device, and we're sending a signal uh, through it, there is inherent delay in the unit itself. We're not really interested in that, we're only interested in the delay in the actual communication circuit. So we need to zero out or calibrate the, the, the unit to get rid of that delay. And that delay changes depending on how many time slots you've got set up on C3794. So, you know, if you change the, the delay will be different depending on what you got your setting is for the number of time slots. Now we've set it one time slots, so that's fine. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the adjust zero offset menu and we need to calibrate out the delay. Now to do that, we need to put a fibre loop back onto the SFP, as per in this picture here, just a simple fibre loop or a loop device, fibre loop device if you've got one. Plug that into the SFP. As I said, I've enabled my, my laser earlier on because I had the cable already plugged in, but if you haven't, you need to go back to the setup menu and enable the laser. But once you've done that, we're just going to go down to the adjust menu here and we're going to select yes to adjust it. And now you can see it's gone away and it's done a calibration and it's calibrated an internal delay in the unit. It's basically sent a signal out, looped it back round, back into the unit and it's calculated that delay as being effectively the inherent delay in the unit. Now once we've done that, we're ready to go to the next stage and basically do do the measurement. So what we would do now is we disconnect the loop and plug the unit um, to the circuit under test and we can start to do or uh, start to do the delay measurement. So once we've finished the unit calibration and we've connected to the unit um, to the line under test, it's quite simple to look at the one way delay test results. We just need to make sure at the top level menu, press the home key, go into the results menu here and you'll see on the third one down we've got delay so when we look at go in press enter go into the delay results and now you can see um, the round trip delay the forward path delay the return path delay and the asymmetry and you also down the bottom see the, the remote host that's the serial number of the unit uh, at the far end now here we've got a very simple loop two units looped back together with basically no uh, no delay in the transmission path, so that's why we're getting results of effectively one microsecond. The accuracy of the unit is in the region of plus or five, plus or mi plus or minus, shall I say, five microseconds. So even in a simple situation here, we've got a simple loop back uh, with two units back to back. Um, there is showing one microsecond delay. One thing you'll notice there is that we've got a current but not a minimum or maximum result. That's because we're not actually running a test as such. So if we press the run button on the front of the unit, then we will actually start to get not only the current measurement, 
but the minimum and maximum. Now one thing I also just want to point out of course is we've talked about the setup of the unit and the calibration of the unit. We need to be doing that at both ends in order to make sure that we have accurate measurements. So the calibration needs to be carried out at either end. Obviously the calibration is independent to that particular unit but once the unit has been switched on, set up and calibrated and then connected to the circuit under test we then from either end of the circuit can see the one-way delay and the asymmetry measurements.